Hello, everyone. Welcome to our webinar, Process Automation Made Perfect. I am Stephen O'Donnell, the Head of Product Marketing for Legal Operations at MetroTech. MetroTech is a global technology provider for corporate legal professionals. For this webinar, we've assembled an esteemed panel of industry experts that will share their direct experiences in designing and implementing legal workflows and share the results that workflow automation has been able to provide to them. Uh, with us today, we have Connie Brenton. Uh, Connie is the Senior Director of Legal Operations at NetApp, as well as President and Chairman of the Board of Clock. We have Emily Tubin, who is the Senior Manager of Legal Operations at NetApp. And we have Justin Hectus. Justin is the Chief Information Officer at Kiesel, Young & Logan, and the leader of NetApp's Workflow Automation SWAT team. Before we get started, I want to set just a few housekeeping items uh, to go over with you. We are recording this webinar. Following the webinar, we will post the recording to the www.clock.org website. Uh, we have a lot of fantastic content prepared for you today. To ensure that we get through that content, we ask you to submit any questions you have via the WebEx Q&A feature. We'll attempt to address as many of those questions as possible at the end of the session as time allows. If there are any questions we do not get to, we will follow up with you after the webinar. And if you have any dip technical difficulties at all, please let us know via the WebEx chat feature. Thank you so much. And with that, I'm going to pass it over to Connie to discuss the importance of collaboration to legal operations. This technology is one of our most favorite technologies. It's about process automation. It's also one specific element of the clock core competencies, the technology and the process support core competency. This technology can enable all the rest of the core competencies, financial management by driving workflows associated with budgets and approvals, as well as driving cost savings, vendor management associated with onboarding and rate approvals, cross-functional alignment, and we will reiterate this over and over by bringing us intimately closer to our internal clients and their business service delivery and alternative providers by leveraging our law companies to help create and even drive some of the most complex workflows and so on, all contributing to the core competency of strategic planning. This webinar is also about collaboration, which is a standard word that you will always hear me talk about when we're talking about clock both internal collaboration as we support and get closer to our internal clients through the use of technology, kind of an oxymoron to many, and external collaboration as we work together in the legal ecosystem to share and leverage the lessons learned and workflows from other colleagues. Collaboration is fundamental to running legal like a business and it is one of CLOCK's foundational pillars. At NetApp, one of our goals is busting silos and building bridges. Finally, it's about leveraging a very cool technology and one of the few that can be used across the entire legal ecosystem, especially between in-house legal teams and law firms that help enable them. This technology solution solves complex problems between multidisciplinary teams in an easy way promoting CLOCK's 12 core competencies. And such, it is a team sport. Heidi Gardner, a former McKinsey consultant and Harvard Business School professor, shows that firms earn higher margins, inspire greater client loyalty, attract and retain the best talent, and gain a competitive edge when, when specialists collaborate across cross-functional boundaries. Again, digital workflows are a team sport. Digital workflow solutions involve the legal ops team, close interaction and collaboration with your internal business clients. It is one of the unintended consequences of this technology. We have become far closer to our, to our internal clients through this single technology than perhaps any other single activity that we have um, put our hands on in the last uh, seven, eight years. Uh, it involves partnership with your technology provider and assistance and input from CLOCK colleagues, often through the user group that's quite active. 
and most, re most recently and very happily uh, with our outside council partners. Thanks, Connie. So this is indeed, uh, this is Justin. Uh, this is indeed a team sport and cross-functional collaboration is built on trust, um, a shared language, a shared set of values and shared goals. Um, that doesn't happen overnight. And cross-organizational alignment can take even longer to achieve. So to illustrate that point, we should take a minute or two to go over a brief history of our relationship. Uh, it started with NetApp becoming an early adopter of ThinkSmart um, back in 2012, and the two companies developing a strong symbiotic relationship. The NetApp team benefited from the flexibility of the tool, but also really helped to influence the product roadmap and drive adoption in the industry. So we saw the NetApp Legal Ops Group and ThinkSmart each growing in tandem with each other over those intervening years. And then in 2016, when I was chairing the um, Legal CIO Forum, I asked Connie to keynote, and she challenged the law firm CIOs to adopt technologies that were fueling innovation and efficiency in-house. And we took her up on that challenge. Our firm adopted ThinkSmart and quickly moved from customer to partner creating solutions for our clients in the banking industry. Um, KYL and NetApp co-created other solutions that we'll talk about in a minute um, using TAP. And then when Mitratech acquired ThinkSmart back in April, we quickly found uh, that we had more kindred spirits in a new and larger tent. Our partnership with Mitratech and the focus on accelerating time to value workflow deployments for new and existing mutual clients through our TAP Accelerator program has resulted in the formation of a new division of our firm, Kiesel Propulsion Labs, or KPL, which is now supporting NetApp's 40 plus workflows, bringing the whole journey full circle. As a frontline observer of the process, it's really striking to me that a client in the tech sector could be a catalyst for change in a law firm that doesn't do that client's legal work, that those changes could then benefit other clients in completely different industries, while at the same time forging new partnerships and relationships, and even a new company, all of which ricochets back for the benefit of the source of the inspiration. And it's a testament to the ripple effects of good ideas and good intentions. So what Justin was talking about and what is very unique in this situation is that we don't actually do business with KYL other than through a partnership on um, TAP. So one of our early NetApp KYL technology engagements took place during a doc review phase of a, comp uh, of a complex troll litigation that was being handled by MOFO. We had millions of emails going back and forth and the complexity of the case was, was more chaotic than operations directors like to see. So midstream, we made a decision to implement a TAP digital workflow process in order to you know, put our arms around and create some efficiencies. So as part of that, we uh, made a phone call to KYL and we asked if they would please QC the workflow. They're also a litigation, um, boutique litigation uh, firm, so we knew that they would understand the process that we were creating. Uh, and they did, they QC'd it, and as it turned out, which is very interesting, we had created a workflow for the collection phase. They had already created a collection, collect, or a workflow for the production phase. So just by that interaction, we had an end-to-end -end solution, we, a tap end-to-end -end solution with collection and production. That collaboration between KYL, TAP, MOFO, and NetApp has been recognized by, in 2017 as an ILTA Innovative Legal Department finalist and in 2018 LMA Technology Impact Award winner for strategy and innovation, and I think a lot of it was because of the characters involved in the, in the collaboration and the fact that we created an end-to-end -end solution with a partner that we weren't doing legal work with. Very cool, uh, and a lot of fun. And the second case study that we'll, uh, mini case study, I should say, that we'll mention at the outset here relates to a series of 2,000 customer complaints in the financial services industry. Uh, this, this is a portfolio of legal work that was high in volume, um, but because of the type of work it was, it needed to be handled at a very low flat fee. Um, it's arguably commoditized work, but the process is relatively complex and there's significant potential risk if complaints are not handled timely and consistently. Um, so we use TAP as the centerpiece of our legal process automation approach for this initiative and work with the client and our lawyers and paralegal who have become subject matter experts 
on the process and we developed a TAP workflow. Um, after a short user acceptance testing phase, um, we made a number of improvements and deployed the workflow, which is now handling all of these early dispute resolution matters um, and avoiding litigation in 99% plus. Um, you can see the actual workflow uh, from TAP on the right. Um, that's from the, uh, from the tool itself. One of the other aspects that underscores the importance of a defined repeatable process in this instance and instances like it is that the workflow goes back and forth between client represented by C and firm represented by F up to nine times during the workflow for each complaint. And it can be touched by a total of 251 possible parties depending on the geography and the customer involved. Um, the process is today achieving its goals of closing files faster, facilitating knowledge transfer to new timekeepers, maintaining consistency, escalating problems quickly, and keeping the cost low for the client. Um, further, as our data set grows, we'll be able to identify trends across the portfolio and staff matters quickly and more appropriately by identifying timekeepers who have handled matters that repeat specific combinations of issues and customers. So, the result of this time in the trenches together, uh, some of which was just you know, time experimenting in the lab or playing in the sandbox, um, has delivered a number of positive, unexpected results. Um, and it's reinforced, at least to me, uh, what seems like um, what the market's been asking for, uh, alignment of solution providers, law firms, and clients so that they can operate as one unit um, and transform legal operations into a center of excellence that drives innovation across the entire organization. And in this case, uh, TAP was the catalyst and legal process automation continues to be the glue and the output of the partnership and the TAP swap team integration. When we started using TAP at NetApp, I quickly developed an expertise on TAP and workflow design in general. All of those activities in the middle box were handled by me, unless there was a bug, and then we would pull in the more technical experts on the TAP side. However, this tool is sticky. And that model wasn't going to last for long, as we quickly grew in use cases and people saw the benefits of the tool. We knew that we needed to have a team of people that we could rely on to design workflows and to design them well. That's where the SWAT team comes in. It's a combination of legal operations and internal subject matter experts on the NetApp side, as well as an external team of experts who come to the table with expertise on TAP, process design, legal knowledge, and development experience. Implementing a SWAT team has allowed us to scale more effectively, build stronger relationships with our clients, which Connie has already mentioned a couple times today, across the enterprise, and bring more workflows across the finish line. After many years of experimenting with this technology, we finally have a SWAT team, the K we call it the KPL SWAT team, that we can actually throw projects over the fence and know it'll be taken care of. Uh, it's, a techno it's a diverse team of both lawyers and technology gurus. When we were starting, we initially thought that anyone could design a workflow because Emily makes everything look easy. <laughs> um, but after trying to train uh, many people uh, on the team and outside of the team, we realized that not everyone can design a workflow because you need, you must be a linear thinker and you must also be a consultant versus an order taker. We found that if you just pick up your manual process and plug it into a digital solution, it will not work. It will never work. It will either not work entirely or it will create complexity in the solution. So being a consultant requires that you make judgment calls and you have the courage to push back even if people say to you, but we've always done it that way. And, and you need people comfortable enough with the technology where they can guide the business unit where they need to go because of your knowledge of the technology versus where they are telling you to go. And that's where the KPL SWAT team has come in and has is shining bright. Uh, their understanding of the law and the technology and their comfort in being counselors helps these workflow projects get off the starting blocks and across the finish line, while also, and we'll say it one more time, strengthening internal client relationships by helping to totally redesign inefficient and cumbersome manual processes. 
One of the most surprising benefits of driving workflow automation is it's allowed us to get closer to the business and see behind closed doors. Our general counsel, Matt Fawcett, came to NetApp eight years ago wanting to create a proactive, not a reactive organization. He wanted us to be business enablers rather than bottlenecks. This technology has allowed us to realize that goal. We're able to come to the table with a solution that will allow other organizations to move faster and processes that we probably never would have seen unless we had this technology. We have developed incredibly close partnerships with other departments. In fact, we've turned into a service provider in a way for the enterprise. Not only that, as cheesy as it sounds, we've changed their lives in the process. Most people think of workflow automation as a system solution, but there can be an incredibly huge people impact to creating a workflow. For the more complex processes, normally there's an entire team of people shepherding the back end, tracking the status constantly, and dropping their day job to handle it. Putting in a workflow allows them to sit back and let the system do the handholding, leaving them with handling the more complex issues that may come up and just exporting a report to get status updates. So getting started, uh, identify the process that's causing you and your department pain. Um, but for um, the initial case to start with, uh, I would preferably choose a workflow that your own team manages. Because as with any technology implementation, you need to, over time, get comfortable with how it works, get the bugs worked out, and it's way better to work out the bugs on your own team. So just like all technology workflows, change management is your toughest nut to, to crack. Thus, start with simple. The nice thing about this technology is it's very intuitive and it sells itself. I can tell you this, but no one believes it until they've actually implemented it. So pick something easy, implement quickly, and this is, a, this is where you can shine, not only for yourself as an individual, but for your organization. If you're new to your role, this is the first technology we would recommend implementing. It's relatively inexpensive, it's easy to implement, you don't need IT, so you don't need to get into, into the IT queue. It's easy to roll out and the ROI is just crazy high. Find something, anything that you can start with, but just start, we always, we always. <laughs> over and over again, we say just start. If you walk away from this webinar with anything at all, remember those two words, just start, or have Dustin's team start for you. <laughs> <laughs> Step two, choose a workflow that doesn't require IT. Often there's, concerned about, there's concern about how much IT will be involved, because their involvement usually means cost and delay. However, the beauty of TAP is you don't need IT involvement at all, unless you're integrating with another system. Choose something that doesn't require an integration first. Then, once you're more familiar with the system, go nuts. Choose whatever you want. See what others are doing with their workflows and borrow workflows that have been created. You can participate in the user group, which is where we often uh, share best practices and trade uh, tap solutions that have already been created. Often process automation success is repeatable just with adjustments, so you can borrow from your friends and tweak it instead of starting from scratch each time. You can also combine different use cases and customize how your automated processes will, will, front, will run. And prioritize which processes to automate first. To start, you might want to address the process that takes a lot of steps or has a ton of stakeholders involved. Workflow automation can be the key to eliminating redundant or complicated steps to get the job done. It can also eliminate human error by handling a lot of work that doesn't require critical thinking or any thinking at all, just checking a box. Bringing up the time of your people in your company to produce innovative, far more complex ideas. Create a plan around implementation and process change, and this goes back to change management. So the success of implementing any new technology often depends on leadership clearly thinking through how the, what um, the rollout will look like uh, and putting a specific change management plan in place that, take, that takes into account training, impact on current workflows, 
uh, communication to the employees, et cetera. So how in the world do you implement a workflow? Most of your heavy lifting and designing a workflow will come at the front end during the discovery and process improvement recommendations phase. Never, ever replicate a manual process when moving to digital. There are always opportunities for improvement, and I guarantee you that if you just design the exact same thing you're doing today, you are going to have issues. The first step is to document what the process is today, what teams are involved, what steps are you doing. Think about the entire end-to-end -end process, not just your part. If you're gathering information from another team, it may make sense to pull them into the initial discussions and figure out what they need in the workflow. After documenting the process, talk about where your pain points are today. For example, is the team constantly babysitting someone? Maybe you should put in automated reminders. They don't have to. Does an executive have to sign a document? Maybe you should automatically copy in their executive assistant when requesting signatures. The process design expert needs to guide the conversation. I've noticed times when a subject matter expert will walk me through the entire process that should be automated, and then a couple weeks later they'll mention to me as an aside that they need to forward an email to another person after it's approved. That may seem minor to some, but that's a huge red flag. They should never have to do anything manually in email. It should all be handled by the system. That's why you need to dig deep into the process to identify those nuggets of information that they don't even realize could be pulled into the workflow. After all that, mock up the workflow and run through it with the team. Expect to make changes. Expect to go through many iterations. Once you have the design finalized, make sure you go through user experience or user acceptance testing with the actual people that would be interacting with the workflow. Test every possible path. Refine the workflow based on the feedback. It's easy to tweak workflows. We're talking days, not weeks, to make changes. And last but not least, Communicate the new process to the key users. We've found that 90% of the time, a training is not needed because if you've designed the workflow well, users will only need a link to get started and the rest is self-explanatory. However, there are some teams that prefer extra guidance and for those, a quick 30-minute training can be helpful for adoption. So let's talk about our NDA portal. We designed our NDA portal to be a one-stop shop that aligns with our department's high-low, no-touch goals. For years, we had an instant NDA that anyone could pick up and send out for signature, but that ran separate from the negotiated NDA path. We wanted to bring both of those paths together into one workflow so any person that needed an NDA across the company could go to one place for all of their NDA needs. Currently, 85% of our NDAs go through the no-touch pre-signed instant NDA option, which has standard terms that anyone can pick up and send for signature without engaging legal. And for 15% of our NDAs, we have high touch, where the request for a negotiated NDA will be routed to our legal team. We want our volume to be as low as possible in that high touch category. To further reduce the number of NDAs going through the high touch red path, we're in the process of implementing self-service pre-approved fallback options. That's the orange path on the screen that an individual can select. The document builder will then create a brand new NDA with those terms, still pre-signed because they're pre-approved fallback terms, and then it will send for signature. We're constantly looking for other use cases that have a similar model, high volume, low risk. A couple other template types we found are eval loan agreements and manufacturing authorization forms. Also travel pre-approval is another good example. As Emily and Connie suggest, workflow automation can optimize core processes that span an entire organization. That's transformational stuff, and it requires no coding. Um, in demonstrating a specific use case for you today, we're going to show the NDA portal from the perspective of the internal business customer, as well as from the perspective of the business analyst who would build the NDA portal. Uh, the features we'll be showcasing include intuitive drag and drop simplicity of use, frictionless integration with existing internal and external systems, and if this, then that conditional logic with escalation paths. In short, we'll be showing legal process automation in a fashion that can be authored and controlled by legal without legal being a bottleneck in the process. Let's start with the user experience. Let's say you want to exchange confidential information with a potential customer. You can request the NDA on your own behalf or on behalf of another employee. The counterparty information is simple and includes a Google address lookup integration and the ability to add multiple counterparties. 
You can add CCs so that other internal or external parties receive a copy once the agreement is fully executed. We're going to select potential customer as the purpose, the Global Mutual NDA as the template. And here you can see that selecting that template displays a short explainer for the requester. Those text fields educate the requester on their options during the request and dynamically change based on the selection. Once submitted, the requester receives a thank you message with a link back to the TAP dashboard. And the document builder creates a signature ready document and sends it to the counterparty. Next, you can see the counterparty reviewing the document on his iPhone and requesting a change to the terms. As you can see, he wants a two-year term instead of a three-year term. And then he receives a confirmation that it's been sent back. Again, reviewing it on his phone. The requester, an internal business customer, not a legal department employee, receives notice and is directed back into TAP, where he sees the reason for not signing and is presented with several pre-approved fallback options. Selecting term reveals a set of standard positions and approved alternatives and allows the requester to change the document within the pre-approved structure. Clicking Submit rebuilds the agreement and provides a preview of the changes, which he's looking at right now. There's the new document, and as you can see, it says two years instead of three. And he sends it back to the counterparty for their signature. The counterparty opens, reviews, and signs the updated agreement on their mobile device. Double checking that it's two years again. Yep, that looks good. Actually, much better than my real signature. <laughs> Now that the counterparty has signed, the requester receives a copy of the executed NDA and it's filed for future review. And one important thing that's not shown there is uh, the audit trail. Um, so all of these changes, all this back and forth, the requests, the fallback provisions that were selected, who selected them are all contained in the audit trail. That's incredibly useful. The beauty of this technology is from the surface, all looks calm. Just like a duck in a pond. However, under the surface, the duck is paddling like crazy to move around. The same thing is happening in TAP. It looks like a gracious glide from a user experience standpoint. It could be the most complex process in the world, but no one would ever know how complex the back end is or how many metrics are being captured and analyzed. It simply looks like an intuitive, friendly technology. Now we're going to demo building the workflow. And in order to do that, we're going to launch TAP um, and we're going to go into the business automation menu and launch the designer. This is how you create it. Right. So Just here, drag, drag and drop. Yeah, first step, we're building the forms. And um, as you can see here, it is just drag and drop. Um, you can create drop-down menus either by manually impl inputting the options or you can link it to a data source uh, through an API. Um, you can see here that uh, all of the form fields, here's the counterparty section, are drag and drop and can be renamed and moved easily, um, can be formatted easily. Um, it is very much what you see is what you get. Um, it's a WYSIWYG designer. Uh, we're going to speed up the screencast a little bit here um, so that we don't bore you with a lot of repetitive functionality. But you can see how easy this is. The other thing is every single one of those fields then you can report on. Correct. Exactly. And you'll see here when we're doing the, um, uh, the terms section, the fallback term section, we're able to use the custom HTML feature um, for those contract terms that display depending on your selection of fallback provisions. You can use that for any custom HTML that you copy into the form, or you can create it from scratch. Next, we're going to go to the workflow stage design. And you'll notice here the same super simple drag and drop functionality, dragging stages of the workflow onto the canvas, um, and then connecting those stages. Um, 
it's really similar to what you would do in Lucidchart or Visio or an application like that. The difference is that here you're actually building um, uh, an early version of your workflow as you're designing it. I mean, you can build and test, iterate, build and test. It's, it's a really, um, it's a great back and forth set of features. Um, you can see here that we're, um, create, we're jumping into the document builder to create that um, agreement. Um, using the document builder allows you not only to author the agreement, but to build in those conditions so that when different web form fields are selected or typed in, that those fields are automatically injected into the agreement and it's built immediately. You can see the formatting is again just as easy as it would be in Word. You can see we've got um, pre automatic pre-signed images in there uh, for the pre-signed version. Then we're going to insert the document builder um, once it's completed with whatever options are selected. We're going to insert that into Adobe Sign. Uh, you can use DocuSign integration or the TapSign e-signature functionality that's built right into the product as well. So you, we're going to speed this up here a little bit so that you can just see it get to completion. But ultimately, what you're going to see here is a relatively rudimentary but uh, but super functional um, NDA portal. This is a completed design with instant self-service and negotiated path. And then next, we'll set up a roles for the workflow. Um, so the roles can be hard coded such that the same people play the same roles in the same stages. Um, at every time that the workflow runs, or they can be assigned based on variables that the requester or other parties fill in to the forms throughout the process. Here you can see we're adding multiple potential counterparties. And then we're grouping roles. And again, this is just very intuitive, forms-driven, WYSIWYG interface. We're going to assign roles to stages and these can be done uh, on a variable basis or they can be um, hard-coded. And we're going to add conditional logic to determine which workflow path um, you'll take based on a very simple if this, then that process. What I love about TAP workflow design is I'm a very visual person. so. What I love about this is I can see on the screen exactly what my workflow is going to look like in real time. And I found that that's helpful with new users as well who are less familiar with the technology. I can share my screen and immediately start designing a workflow as I speak to them. And the impact is incredible. The other thing is you can then share amongst colleagues and that's a very easy visual to share. Not sharing code or words sharing a picture. And same thing with email notifications here. You know, you can, this is designing it from the ground up, but we're using a template. Um, these are very easy to change based on user requirements or the change in the process or additional notifications that need to be added. And you'll see here that the last field we'll put into the template um, is actually an Adobe signed field, even though it's actually going to be presenting it and linking it back to TAP. It's going to be telling the requester um, what the reason was for the re rejection or the requested change. And the benefit of movie magic, that's an NDA workflow in five minutes or less. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the other thing is the TAP community is incredibly supportive. Uh, we've implemented over 20 technologies in the past eight years at NetApp, and this is uh, one of our very favorite. Not only because it's easy to implement, it has a high ROI, but because we also can leverage the learnings from our colleagues and our friends, and we're, we're willing to share what we have learned so that others can avoid some of the issues that we have already experienced. Some of these workflows, NDA being one of them, is clearly one of the workflows that can be shared across the entire industry. Yeah, and this, the NDA workflow is a great example of that community and how willing they are to share. It's a, it's a group of great chefs and they all have great recipes that they're willing to share. And um, we were able to spend time with four different TAP clients who were eager to share their approaches to handling the same type of agreement workflow using TAP. 
And these are workflow experts who not only know their own tool and, and their organization intimately, um, but uh, they also know process improvement um, and their openness to sharing is refreshing and empowering. Um, the value of, of TAP as a technology is multiplied many times over thanks to this network of peers and their collective feedback and support, and it's really driven improvement in the product as well. So based on our experience with workflows, here are some important tips for implementing a workflow. Number one, map out and design a solid process first. You have an opportunity to design a process that will allow you to be more efficient, so take the time to ask the tough questions. Drill into the current bottlenecks and inefficiencies. Spend the time at the front end to map out your process. Believe me, it will save you in the long run. We've had a couple of workflows that we've had to completely redesign after going live and identifying huge issues with the process. That said, don't let that stop you from going live. Expect to make changes. Expect to redesign some aspects of the workflow. Sometimes you'll have to make a judgment call when designing the process that you'll realize later was a huge mistake. That's okay. It's more important that you just start and adjust as you go along. So at the very beginning, make sure you get everybody in the room together because that is where your process originates. And if you're missing somebody's lens during the design phase, you'll end up paying for it on the back end. The second thing is once you go live, collect metrics and stay on it until you are completely stable. So after we go live, after we go from the sandbox into production, we have at least weekly meetings and we look at the metrics because if you can, if you follow the metrics, you can determine whether or not there one is adoption or if you're, if you're experiencing a, a mistake, an actual mistake in the workflow. So until you are stable, meet regularly. We have made the mistake of celebrating on go live date, and then two months later, we, we realized when we were collecting our monthly metrics that there had been no adoption, and we had to go back in and try and figure out what in the world had happened. So stay on it until it's stable. And last, put yourself in the user's shoes. This is an issue I see all the time. People design a workflow for themselves when they aren't the ones using it. They may own the process, but they don't ever go through the steps themselves. Remember, people cannot read your mind. If you use acronyms, spell them out or define them in a hover tip. If you need a field filled out, make it required. The beauty of TAP is you can design a workflow so the user doesn't have to know anything about the process to complete a request. Make it so they don't have to think. The minute we started to use TAP, we found that it was easy to implement. Uh, it was in a relatively inexpensive technology, and it had a very high ROI that was easy to calculate. So we have done some of this work for the industry. We have gone through and we have created a model for cost savings, and the cost savings per click is this a way, easy way to remember it? One two three four five. One two one twenty three point forty five cents per workflow. So now we went from, just imagine, three years ago we had zero clicks. Now we are getting around 30 to 35,000 clicks a year with an annual savings of around $4 million. One of the most difficult parts of implementing workflow technology is identifying use cases. But once you touch the technology, you can't stop finding use cases. We now have use cases in seven departments, and that has been growing rapidly over the past year or so. What we found is once people start using TAP, they become our own evangelists and start spreading the word across the company for us. We started in legal because it's easiest to start within your own team, work out the kinks, and then spread it to other departments. To highlight some workflows in legal, we have a conflict of interest disclosure form, gift and entertainment request form, and partner due diligence onboarding form. We also use it in the e-billing world for onboarding new matters or suppliers and approving new timekeepers. In finance, we use it for employees to request a corporate card and to request approval for travel. In sales, they use it for requesting passes to our yearly sales conference. We also have a contract review request form for the sales team to request help with negotiating a sales contract. 
And on the HR side, we use it for education reimbursement, adoption assistance, and an offboarding process for employees in India. This truly is a global tool. The tool is also uh, self-perpetuating. And so when we first started, and we've said it, I don't know, a half a dozen times so far, one of the unintended consequences of this technology is it brought us very close to our internal clients. We have, we have rolled out simple solutions like the NDA, and we have also rolled out extremely complicated solutions. We used it for a RIF um, activity a couple of years ago. It becomes uh, self-perpetuating, and so what we once were doing uh, and servicing each one of the workflows, we can no longer support because we now have 42 use cases across the enterprise that would consume an entire resource in legal. Thus, our, our relationship with KYL and the KYL SWAT team. And, and the, the other thing that we did, just as an aside, is we paid for all of the initial legal, paid for all of the initial rollouts because it is such an easy technology and it's, and it, it's so easy to make yourself shine that uh, we paid for probably the first 30 technologies. Once we hit the tipping point and needed to bring in an assistance or a SWAT team, uh, we also transferred the funding for the technology over to the independent organizations. That allowed us to gain some momentum with other business users as well, because one of the first questions that people ask when we tell them about the technology is, how much does it cost? And so allowing them to get comfortable with the technology, understand the benefits, and have us put the bill in the beginning made them more comfortable with finding other use cases and eventually taking it in in their own budget. Yeah, and one of the other things that happened is once you get into this 40 use case arena is it requires project management. And if you have other topics or issues you're dealing with within the legal organization, sometimes those use cases would get put on the back burner for a couple of months and you have to reinitiate them. So instead of a workflow going out of the gate within two weeks, you know, we were looking at two, three, four, six months, which was a very inefficient way to implement this solution. Tap by the numbers. So we've talked about it before, but we now have 42 use cases, seven different global organizations within the enterprise. Uh, since the beginning of the rollout three years ago, we have realized $10.5 million in savings, and we're on track for $4 million savings. This is also one of the metrics that we report to CEO staff weekly. One of the reasons that we report this up to the CEO staff is because it is such an easy technology implementation that one of, the, one of the more difficult things as you get more mature is to identify use cases. So making it visible at the CEO level uh, allows all of the executives to start looking for potential use cases as well. Connie, Emily, and Justin, thank you. That content was really awesome. Um, if, if anyone on this call has any questions, please send them into the Q&A fe uh, Q feature on WebEx. We've actually got a few that ca came in, um, a couple that I can address, and then I, I think we have one for Justin and Connie as well. Um, the first question is, what is TAP, and is TAP an acronym for something? Um, TAP is the product that we've been discussing today that enables the workflow automation and collaboration um, that, that's been achieved at NetApp and, and, and at other similar clients. As far as what it stands for, um, uh, it stands for the ThinkSmart Automation Platform. And uh, ThinkSmart, when it was acquired by Mitratech earlier this year, we loved the name, just like we loved the product, just like we loved the spirit of co-innovation and collaboration uh, at, at, uh, with all the clients. And we wanted to keep all of that alive, so we're keeping, keeping the TAP name. Um, we also got a question, is this app integrated with DocuSign? Uh, it, it integrates with DocuSign, Adobe Sign, and Secured Signing, which is less used, but there are companies out there using that as well. 
Um, it's a flexible uh, uh, solution, so it is able to really um, integrate with whichever one of those technologies uh, that, that you guys use um, at your site. Um, there's, a, there's also a question, um, is this solution offered on-premise or is it a cloud-based offering? This is a cloud-based offering, so it is not an on-premise solution. Are you going to send a copy of the deck to the participants? I believe we will send out a link with the recording and it will be posted to the clock.org website. Keep looking at this list. So I have a question that was sent directly to me. I don't Great. think you can see it, Stephen. It says on the back end, is the NDA portal implemented, integrated to F SFDC or other app or contracts repository? We recently integrated TAP with Aptis, which is on SFDC, and that was a very easy integration. What's great about TAP is one of the built-in apps that you can integrate with, along with electronic signatures, is Salesforce.com. So it was a matter of taking an integration key and a secret key, copying and pasting, and clicking save. It was that simple. It was that simple for Emily. <laughs> <laughs> True, yeah. yeah. It took like, I don't know, an hour of Emily's time. I, I have one that was also sent just to me, um, but the question's actually for Justin. Justin, you have an a interesting um, point of view or, or, or place to observe this, this from, being in a law firm but working with the corporations on this. Are there some other kind of areas of, of collaboration between law firms and corporate uh, uh, counsel corp that you see as uh, a place that workflow automation would really help? Well, you know, I, I think it might be unique in terms of timing, but I don't think it's—I don't think it should be unique. I think this this type of relationship that transcends traditional boundaries is what the market's been asking for. I said that earlier um, today, and I think that, you know, as a business analyst with a team that includes lawyers um, and subject matter experts on privacy and you know contracts and litigation. And, We've also got, um, you know, security analysts and um, uh, developers and trainers. Um, that is a team that looks much more like our clients than I think the team that law firms traditionally field. And so that, you know, we feel like that's the right approach. And when it comes to workflow automation, you know, if you're manufacturing stuff, you know, manufacturing should lead the workflow automation. But when it comes to information specifically, um, legal should lead because we're better at that, I think. You know, in, in most organizations, the legal department has the greatest need to collect and manage information in the most sophisticated systems for that. They also know compliance and control really well, and that puts us collectively in the full position to be a leader for using information as an asset and managing these workflow automation uh, initiatives. Awesome. So another question that I have here yeah. is, what are the key KPIs or ROI components leveraged in a business case to justify the adoption? Okay, so I'm gonna rewrite the question just a tad. It is, <laughs> how, how can you identify a good use case? Uh, here are three, or three pointers. One, with the adoption of TAP and uh, electronic signature, our mantra is no paper. And if you start saying it over a period of two, three years, you will get people thinking differently because once you stop leveraging the use of paper, everything becomes more efficient and governance is far easier and you can run analytics and you can identify problems, et cetera, et cetera. Anyway, you, I could get on a, on a pulpit or on no paper. And what we have said multiple times is if you're picking up a pen to sign something on paper, you're doing something wrong. We've said that over and over again, and now people in our department have come to us before saying, I almost picked up a pen to sign something on paper and I realized I should come to you to ask <laughs> what I should do instead. That's right. No email approvals. So if you are seeing emails go back and forth, can you approve this? Can you approve that? That is a red flag that this could be a potential uh, rollout for TAP. And third, no spreadsheet tracking. So if you, this is where we were seeing very complex workflows, particularly in our sales organizations, well, th where they were tracking 
responses in spreadsheets and following up with email reminders. Those are very easy, quick wins. And on the spreadsheet and email approval side, think of the amount of back and forth that happens before that approval happens, because they need pieces of information to provide approval or to put it into a spreadsheet. And if you send a bullet pointed list of six different things, inevitably, they'll give you four out of the six. And so you have to go back and forth to get those remaining answers. When you have a workflow in place, you make those fields required. They can't proceed without giving you that information. So they have to think about what they need from you before they engage you. You have to remember this is how we started uh, the collection workflow during, during our troll litigation is we just saw way too many emails going back and forth. It is so easy to lose control and governance of documents when, when you're sharing them through email that it is an automatic red flag that there certainly could be an easier solution to this. And back to Justin's point when he said earlier in the presentation, you have an audit trail for every single one of those emails or data points or questions that are filled out. You don't have that normally. I mean, you have it in one or two people's inboxes, but no one else. You can find the documents. You can run analytics on it instantly. So Penelope has a, our friend Penelope Cruz has a question about the ROI. Um, that, came, that came from a ThinkSmart study that was Commission by ThinkSmart, or was it through Clock? The, the it was, 23. Right. That that was a joint. That was a joint modeling. So there's an algorithm that sits behind that 123.45. Okay. It asks how many people, how many papers are you shipping, how many, how much time does the average person on that team spend during the day? So that's an average. You could plug it in for a more complex workflow and get a much larger number. Got it. Great. So there's a question about how to connect to the user group. Stephen, you want to field that one? Yes, absolutely. Um, if you guys, uh, anyone who wants to join that group, if you'll uh, contact us at info at mitrotech.com, we'll make sure to get you to the members of product management that are engaged with the, with the clients and running that user group. The other thing I want to mention is, is we have our annual user conference coming up in September, Interact. And the user group is going to meet there, but we are going to stream that out so that people that aren't attending the conference or just interested in general and what's going on with the TAP can attend. Great. Another question I have here is, is there a possibility to use this as a contract management tool? The quick answer is yes. The instant NDA example that we're showing is a mini contract management tool in a way because it's shepherding a contract through a process as far as a more robust contract management system, Bonnie? Oh, man. <laughs> I think you could use it to manage certain pieces of the contract management lifecycle. We've yeah, used yeah. it for obligations management, reminders when contract owners are terminated and you want to let their manager know which contract they previously owned so that you don't miss some sort of termination deadline. Um, I'm, I'm not sure it would end-to-end -end manage the entire contract management lifecycle. There are really well-defined products that do that. Yeah. I would agree with that. And on the GDPR question, someone asked, does the system facilitate GDPR compliance and identification of personal information? The answer is yes. Um, you know, there are other tools out there that are specifically angled towards privacy and, and compliance. Um, we've used it for the Article 30 data inventory. We've also used it for identification of PI, and um, it's, you know, it's a very flexible tool, so it could be used for whatever type of information gathering or identification um, or data mapping that you're interested in doing. I see there's a question here about whether or not um, it is easy to integrate with other Mitra Tech products, such as Team Connect and eCouncil. Um, it, it is, uh, uh, TAP can actually integrate with all types of solutions, not just ones for Mitra Tech, but um, yes, we are building a tighter uh, integration with Team Connect that doesn't require any type of custom coding. Uh, the main use cases we've seen so far for that is new matter intake, uh, where the matter will act actually open in Team Connect. Team Connect, by the way, for anyone on the call that doesn't know, is our enterprise legal management solution. Uh, another use case we've seen is law firm uh, retention letters um, that, that uh, generate the attack.
Great. Thank you. Thank you to the community. Thank you to the clock community because it is through these collaborations that we as a community continue to grow faster than we ever could grow individually. Okay, great. Well, thank thanks you, everyone Jim. for joining. And we will be thank sending you. out the recording later and a survey. So if you join the webinar, please fill out the survey and let us know what you think. Have a great rest of the day. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.